love of God that was shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And in that love is the gifts of the Holy Ghost that are in us, uh, 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 a joy unspeakable, full of glory. They're all unconditional and patience and goodness and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control and also peace. And so we have that in us now. And that we also know that he put the gifts in us. Each one of us have the gifts within us. And those gifts are word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, uh, tongues and interpretation and prophecy, gifts of faith, gifts of miracles, gifts of healing. And Jesus said that when I give you the Holy Ghost, that out of the innermost parts of your being is going to be flowing those rivers, not one, but rivers of living water. And so that is the Holy Spirit, he said. And so each of us who baptized in the Holy Spirit, we have all of this in us and that we've been blessed of God to be a blessing. So we're going to talk about getting those rivers flowing in our lives. You have what you need already in you and what others need. Hallelujah. So we're, ta we're talking about activating the gifts of the Holy Spirit and moving in that supernatural power of God. And, and so, but following the way of love in it. And so the fruits of the Holy Spirit, that love is to intertwine with the gifts and, uh, and move forth in our life. You know, uh, Paul said this in, in, in 1 Corinthians, uh, what was it, 12.1. And uh, as they're getting, oh, they got the scripture up there already. But I just want to say this one thing before I go there, that we just returned uh, from Italy. We, God put Italy in our heart, and we went there at, on a mission, and we had uh, five, uh, three churches, but God put in our heart to go there. God called us to the nation of Italy to bring uh, the covenant of grace there to set them free from legalism and religion, getting them born again, spirit-filled, but also to break the bond of poverty off of that nation and bring them into the wealth that Jesus had already said is ours. Wealth and riches are in our home. He became poor that we might be rich, that bringing them into that place that Jesus already did it, the new covenant, and that they just step into that. And they're not earners under the covenant of grace, but now they're receivers of what Christ has already done. Oh my goodness, uh, the miracles of salvation and baptism of the Holy Spirit, the healing and the, and the move of breaking bondages all off of people's lives and their captivities was huge in Italy. And we, God, as we were leaving, Dr. Tom said, okay, God, uh, what did you think? God said, you did what I called you to do. Hallelujah. So we are so excited about this. And so talking about the gifts here, as they put that up, 12-1, uh, let's put it up again. God said about, and Paul was saying this, uh, to us, the believers, that's what he's saying, I, about spiritual gifts, I would not want you to be ignorant. Now, what that word ignorant means in the Greek means to be have little thought or no thought at all about the gifts, uh, be passive, uh, to be uninvolved, not to expect the gifts to be moving in our lives. And so it is, it is that... Uh, just not believing them to flow out of us like a river, not putting even any faith on them at all, uh, just forgetting that they're there. That's what that word ignorant means. And so praise God. So God does, Paul says, I don't want you to be that way. And so as the word says that that river is to flow out of us. We are to be experiencing the gifts. We are to expect them to flow out of our life like a river. And uh, we're to not only uh, uh, touch our lives, that we have all that we need to live in health, because by his stripes we were healed, and all the gifts of, of in the kingdom of God have already been lavished on us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly father. And so they move by faith. And so if I give thought to them, what I do in my own life is that 
uh, this is the time of the Holy Spirit, New Covenant. And so I begin to pray every day, and I, right there, I acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're the advocate of my life. You are my helper. You are my counselor. You are the intercessor of my life. You are the spirit of truth. You are the guide of my life. And I submit to all of that you are in my life. I need you to now move in my life. Divine connections for your purpose. I'm blessed, but now those blessings in me need to flow out of me like a river to bless those around me and to make me aware that as I go about my day, oh, Holy Spirit, now have, bring, bring people into my life that needs what I have. And I submit to it and make me aware of it. And so that's what I pray. Now, uh, so it's so important, you know, when a river is not flowing, when water doesn't flow, it gets stagnant. So when the gifts are not flowing in our life, and they only flow by believing, you know, you believe for it. And you, I pray those prayers, and then I see the supernatural going on in my life as I go about my day. And uh, I'll be talking about that later, but right now we're just talking about that river. And when we went to Italy several years ago, we stayed on a lake there in, in Sabodia, and, uh, but... It, the lake wasn't moving, and it became very stinky, stagnant. And so, it, so it's like our gifts. They need to be flowing out of us. And, uh, and everyone that is baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have it to be giving it away. Hallelujah. So he's saying, I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to be mindful of what I put in you in the new covenant of the, the Holy Ghost. This is the time of the supernatural. God said you'll do greater works than I've done because I've gone to the Father. The word of God says that you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover, that the blind will see, that the lame will walk, that the deaf will hear. Freely you receive Freely give these things for whosoever will. Ha hallelujah. So, praise God. And so, one of the things that God was saying to me is 1 Corinthians uh, 2, 4, and 5. It says, he, Paul goes on to say this about the gifts. My preaching, my teaching, and my preaching uh, would not be... Uh, with persuasive words of human wisdom, but of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. That man's faith would not rest, right, on man's wisdom, but on the power of God. And so what is he saying there? That when you speak, it should be the power of the Holy Ghost going forth to now do signs and wonders in your life and others' lives, the power of their speech. And I know in my own life uh, that uh, one night I woke up in the middle of a dream, and, and in that dream uh, that I was having, I saw these like walnut shells coming towards me in the dream. And I thought, well, what is that? What's in them? I didn't know. And then all of a sudden, as I was speaking the word in the dream, uh, uh, they opened up and out came a person. And so God was showing me that by the power of our spoken word going forth, that we set people free from their captivity. But in that dream also, as I was waking up, I was under this resurrection supernatural power that I was experiencing all covering me and experiencing it that I actually was so powerful and so overwhelming that I woke up Dr. Tom and I said, the word of God is all powerful because I was experiencing it right then. I believed it, but now I'm experiencing it. And he goes, yes, we know that. No, it really is. It really is because I was so under it. Not, it was really interesting that I even said that, but Hallelujah. So Paul is saying, now I want you to know, I want you to, you realizing that your words are not persuasive 
words, but your words are of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah, let's just move on. And so, in the gifts of the Spirit, one of the things that I do, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says, uh, no one should say Jesus is Lord. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, let me back up here. Uh, when I was 30 years old, God brought us uh, out here to Arizona from Wisconsin, and and I was young in the Lord, and I really, I had a supernatural experience at salvation, but that was it. I had the gifts of the Holy Spirit in my life. But when I got out here, uh, God began to prepare me for this season in my life, and God God wants us to be awakened to the gifts. And so one of the things is that I met a friend, and she was going to a Bible college class, and she wanted me to go and, and be a part of it, and that was that was the moment of God for me. And so I went to it, and the, the instructor was talking about the five-fold ministry. Well, I'd never heard about the five-fold ministry before, and I was listening very intently about what he was talking about. And all of a sudden, I felt this heavy mantle fall on me. And it was so heavy that it actually took my breath away for a second. And I thought to myself, what just happened? And I looked around to see if anybody else had experienced that. And I'm trying to figure out what just happened. On the way home, I didn't say anything to her. And uh, then all of a sudden, after that moment, I was having uh, different supernatural experiences in my life. And it was imparting me for the day that we were going to build Living Word Bible Church. And so God was giving me everything I needed. But... I realized later because it says that the apostle and the prophet lays the foundation for the church, and that mantle that fell on me was a prophetic mantle, and uh, and so so again the supernatural of God that uh, and so when that happened, when I read the scripture that only the Holy Spirit can say in us Jesus is Lord. So before I move out in the gifts. I always say in my head, Jesus is Lord. Only the Holy Spirit can say. So I know that it is the Holy Spirit wanting me to bring forth one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit or the prophetic word. And uh, so that's my way of checking to be sure. Now, in moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, our identity cannot be in that. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are about the love of God in you that you care about the pain of others or the prisons that they're in. And But my identity, your identity needs to be in Jesus. I'm valuable because Jesus made me valuable. I'm precious in his sight because Jesus did that. I'm loved by God because I'm a child of God. So moving in the gift has nothing to do with my value. That's so important that we don't get our value by moving in the gifts because then it's the wrong motive. It's not the motive of love. It's a motive of exalting yourself. And so be sure that as you move in the gifts, it's because uh, you care about others and you know that you've been blessed to be a blessing. Hi, I'd like to share with you today this book called God's Grace Fuels My Passion. This is a real good book by Dr. Moraine and she's really poured her heart into it to reveal the heart of God. And it talks about grace, uh, God's ability to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. When there's no condemnation, you can do anything. And that's where the power of God's grace fuels your passion and his love just overwhelms you and you'll be able to do great things. It goes on to say, and this is what I have here. I'm going to say the scripture, but then I'm going to explain it to you, all right? The Bible says the same, this is 1 Corinthians 12, 6, says the same God distributes different kinds of miracles that accomplish different results through each believer's gift and ministry as he energizes and activates them. Now, that's a lot to say. So I have uh, 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 right here uh, an example to help you. So first of all, when the gifts move in our life, we are all unique 
in it. Uh, you're one of a kind, and there's a uniqueness, and it's not wise to compare ourselves with one another. Now, on my own life, I've experienced this. When that a mantle of the prophet fell on me, I looked at Bill Hammond, and I went, I don't move like that. So doubt and unbelief, because I was comparing myself with somebody else, all right? Then, when Dr. Tom, I was moving in signs and wonders and miracles, but then when Dr. Tom started to move in signs and wonder miracles, I wasn't doing it like he did. You know, when he moves in miracles, he, he starts to cry because the passion of God comes on him, and then the supernatural power goes on, and I don't cry. So what happens? I go, well, he moves in miracles. So people come for prayer, miracles. Oh, I, I don't do that. He does that. Mm. What happens? We get doubt and unbelief in us. God had to show me. And he's showing you tonight, do not, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's about faith, knowing you're going to be unique, and you cannot compare yourself with somebody else. This is what the scriptures say. So here's one believer, and looks like this, and here's another one, all right? So they're different. We have different gifts. We have the gifts, but different ways. God says that he puts miracles, right? What does it say there? Distributes different kinds of miracles. Turn to your neighbor and say, there are different kinds of miracles. So this is one miracle. This is an example. goes in this package, this person's life. But this gift, is it looks very different from the other gift of miracles and goes in this one. All right, then he says what? Okay, we see different kinds of miracles. Each one had different from the other. Then the second thing he says, with the gift of miracles that's in it, it accomplishes different results. So the way I move in miracles that God put in me is going to be different than Dr. Tom, and mine's going to produce different results. See, different results than his does. And so it goes on to say, in the believers, according to the gifts and ministry that is each in each of them. It's complicated, but it's not complicated, all right? And then he says what? That he then activates the gift and energizes it. So what does that mean? That means that he then causes it to flow out of us like a river and touches lives around us and our own life, activates it. At moves it, gets it moving, and energizes it. Well, what's my part? My part is to believe it. My part, the Word of God says, and let's put those scriptures up, all right? My part is to earnestly desire the best gift. That word earnestly means to be uh, serious, intentively. It means to bu uh, bubble okay, or boil over with passion as you seek it. So it's a, in you, you're passionate, you're seeking it, you're bubbling over with that, you're boiling over, you're earnest, you're attentive about the miracle gifts that he puts in you to, to now, that's your part. Your part is to do, right? Remember, we need to expect we need to be thoughtful. We need to be experiencing. We need to, and, and so in our prayer life, we need to see it and visualize it. I pray those prayers uh, every day. I pray that about the Holy Spirit in my life and, and praying what he's supposed to do in my life. And then I see it. Yes, I, yes, I see the, the, the sick healed. I see the, you know, the, you know, the poverty being gone in people's lives, salvation. And so I say, I say divine connections today, but I go about my day uh, seeing God touch. What I'm seeing that every day, wherever I go, somebody's getting saved. And so uh, the other day I was at the dentist's office and I came out and uh, the lady that was going to go in next, she says to me, she says, oh, you have no weight problem. You're thin. I bet you never have to worry about it. 
And right there, the Holy Spirit filled my mouth. And I said to her, oh, I've had a weight problem, but I asked God how much I should weigh. And then he told me, and then I watched my weight and weighed myself and kept calling that in. And yes, today I can eat whatever I want and never gain weight and stay at the weight he told me. But it's God. And she went, oh, you're a prayer warrior. She said, what church do you go to? Well... I have in my purse always uh, what I need for the moment. I have a prayer to pray to get born again. I pull out my prayer card. I say to her, oh, this is what I've done. Now, sometimes I pray with them the prayer, but sometimes I tell them, this is a prayer. Pray this prayer, and it'll change your life. And, uh, and so, anyway... It's the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to tell you, it wasn't something I was looking to do. It wasn't a thought in my mind. We're naturally spiritual. It was just a natural conversation. And, uh, and then we, we had another meeting. Uh, and so I came out of that meeting. I wasn't at the dentist. And the lady there said, Wow, I bet you never have to worry about your weight. I don't know why they're saying that to me right now. But I also did not have any freedom to say anything to her about my prayer because the Holy Spirit said she's not ready. But because I gave the Holy Spirit permission, now we're, uh, we're in uh, Apple Store with, with the lead pastor, Jason and Kelly, and the lady was working with us at the Apple Store, and and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, she's ready to get saved. And so I began to talk to her naturally. We had a natural conversation and gave her the card, and she got born again. And then, uh, then we were just, I mean, it's happening all the time. Now, you go, well, no, it never happened before because I never acknowledged it to happen. I was busy about my day, and I didn't pray about that. Yes, I pray the word all the time, but I began to pray about the Holy Ghost and what he was to do in my life and the gifts and earnestly desiring it. And so is, this is all happening. And, uh, but, but it didn't happen before because I was busy about my day, and I didn't give the Holy Spirit permission. And, and it isn't like I have a schedule like to do. Now, the Holy Spirit fills my mouth. And gives me what I need. So we're in Boston. We're coming home. And Dr. Tom wanted to buy something at the Levi store. We went there. And she's helping him. And then we're talking. And the Holy Spirit said, she's ready to get saved. And so I pulled out my card. I began to talk to her with the Holy Spirit filled my mouth with. I didn't feel led to pray with her. But I said, this is a prayer. It will change your life. This is what I pray. I, so the next day, Dr. Tom needed to go back and make some changes. And so when we went back, she looked at me and said, I prayed the prayer. How, this, I mean, oh, my goodness. God wants that river to be flowing out of our life daily. And it's supernatural naturally. Hallelujah. And I find I walk by somebody that's in a wheelchair and passion goes out. And I find myself praying. I maybe don't go lean hands on them or scare them. God doesn't tell me to do that. But I began to pray for healing for them. And so anyway, just moving on. Earnestly, but another one, 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 12 says this. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. That word desire there means to be zealously about the gifts, to be a strong feeling of wanting them to flow in our life, to be fervent, to be passionate and devoted to it. So it was really interesting. Uh, my aunt, uh, my brother, okay, let, let's back up. My brother texted me and said, uh, my cousin uh, was just diagnosed with mel um, melalonin. What's it, how do you say that word? Melanoma, okay, hallelujah, sometimes I get a little nervous to say it, but melanoma, cancer, uh, in the end of June, she was diagnosed with it in that it was in stage four, and she had cancer throughout her whole body, and so anyway, uh, 
and uh, my aunt lives in uh, Sun City. So we called up there when I heard about it that we wanted to pray for her daughter. And uh, she said, you know, I just said to my husband, we need to contact uh, Tom. This is time for Tom, okay? Uh, and so anyway, so we said we would pray with her. And so we prayed. So we got on speaker phones and we prayed for her for the healing over the phone. Well, I was looking at Facebook yesterday, and what did it say? Rhonda, her name is Rhonda, she said, I, all my tests came back, and I'm cancer-free. It's all gone. Miracle happened. See, maybe my family's in total health. Maybe ain't nothing's going on in my family, but here there is somebody else whose daughter was given no hope to live. But I had, Dr. Tom had what they needed for the moment. And so we, right on the phone, we couldn't go there, but we, we prayed with her. And I don't know if they're believers. I don't know that, okay? They don't go to church. I don't know that. But on Facebook, she said, the doctor said, wow, this is a rare result. <laughs> she said, I was healed. And then I, I saw my aunt Put on, you know, you know, putting it on Facebook and declaring, my daughter's healed of cancer. Thank you for all your prayers out there. And so somebody made a comment, and she commented back, well, you know, my niece's husband uh, is a healer. <laughs> you know, that's how the world works. We know Jesus is the healer. But they, she acknowledged that. So I said, Dr. Tom and I started praying for their salvation. We have each, it isn't that we're somebody special. We're all somebody special if we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was moving in the gifts before I was in the ministry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I need to end. Any case, let's just close with this prayer. Uh, Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I ask your son Jesus to come into my heart, into my life, and be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We are a 501c3. All of your donations are tax deductible. The WordForWinners.com ministry believes that your tithe belongs to your local church. Your financial donations to this ministry are received as offerings to support spreading the gospel of grace throughout the world. Go directly to the web to place your donation, thewordforwinners.com. Become a Grace Revelation Builder today.